The latest headlines in the Ivy League, covered through exclusive interviews right now. From campus to campus, go around the ancient eight with Brian Seltzer, Thursdays on the Ivy League Digital Network. Ice hockey. Starting up in Cambridge, Massachusetts, a few days removed from the Women's Ice Hockey National Championship game in Minnesota between the Crimson and the Gophers. It was a 4-1 to loss for the Crimson. They're the national runners-up, but all in all, a lot accomplished over the course of this season. Following it all on the Ivy League Digital Network was Bill Spaulding. Bill, how would you put this season in perspective? It's really been a fantastic second half of the season for Harvard. It's amazing when you think about it. They started the year 2-2-2, two, two, and, two, and that second loss was a 10-2 loss to Boston College. From then on, though, they were just a, a really an unstoppable force, especially in the Northeast. They beat Boston College in the Women's Bean Pot to take their first Women's Bean Pot championship in about five years. They rolled through ECAC tournament play, got lopsided victories against really strong teams like Quinnipiac in the run to the first and four, and then had outstanding goaltending again from Emerson Smashmeyer in that first and four win against Boston College for a second time. Unfortunately, ran into a, a hot Minnesota team in Minnesota for the championship. Bill, you mentioned junior goalie Emerson Smashmeyer who had 18 wins on the season, but how about this senior class? Seven members, nearly 100 wins over the course of their four-year career. What have they done to get Harvard back to the point where they're competing for titles? They really did start to lay that foundation again. So many talented players in that group. You look at a couple of uh, West Olympians and Josephine Pucci, Lindsey Fry as well. They played back in 2014 for Harvard head coach Katie Stowe and it's Katie Stowe. But on top of that, you had some really strong leaders in that senior class. Players that have been captains like Kaylee Armstrong. Uh, you throw Marissa Gedman in there and Samantha Reaver. A really strong leadership group that helped refocus this team after that slow start to the season this year. So I think experienced players helped really uh, lay a foundation and, and set a good example for the younger players to pick up from where they left off this season and try to continue that success next year. A 27-6-3 season for Harvard women's hockey. Bill Spaulding followed the action on the Ivy League Digital Network this season. Bill, thank you very much. Thank you. Lacrosse. Home lacrosse beat all season long, not just for the Ivy League, but also nationally. ESPN broadcaster, lacrosse magazine writer, Eamon McEnany. Eamon, you've got four Ivy League programs in the top 20, Cornell at 7, Princeton number 9, Yale at 11, and Brown at number 12. What's the national perception of what's been taking place in the Ivy League this season? Uh, confusing. <laughs> um, certainly we know the level of talent in that league. The Ivy League and with the Patriot League right behind it has been one of the toughest leagues to figure out so far about, what, a month, six weeks into the season. Cornell seems to be a little bit above the rest of the league, but it's a traffic jam. The Big Red 2-0 in the conference standings. They've won three straight. The Princeton Tigers also 2-0 through league play so far, and they've won three games in a row. For those two teams in particular, what's gotten them to get on a roll heading into the meat of the Ivy League schedule? Well, they're very offensively skilled. They have some veteran players who have been around their coaches in the Ivy League for a while. And the same thing for Chris Bates' club. They know how to score, and they know how to get open. You know, they're finished products at this point. Eamon, obviously some really critical conference games coming up, entering the home stretch of the season. What are some of the storylines you're looking out for as we head into the final four weeks? I want to see Brown play. You know, I've seen the box scores, and I've read about them, and I've talked to Lars Tiffany. And, you know, he talks about their reckless, unapologetic style on offense. I mean, that game could really get out of hand in a good way for fans. Not too many people play that way right now. It's a little refreshing for me as a fan to see a team go up and down and push the pace on offense and push the envelope on offense. But in this game, that could play right to Princeton's hands because Princeton kind of loves that game as well. But I also just want to see, you know, over the next month, I want to see who emerges in this league. That is excellent men's lacrosse insight from Eamon McEnany of ESPN. He also writes a weekly column for Lacrosse Magazine, airing on ESPNU this Sunday morning at 11 o'clock. It's Brown at Princeton, and Eamon will have the call of Harvard and Princeton later on this season towards the middle of April. Eamon, thanks so much for a few minutes. No problem. You got it. Anytime. And that'll do it for this week's edition of Around the Ancient Eight. For all the latest news and contents around the conference, head to IvyLeagueSports.com or IvyLeagueDigitalNetwork.com. This has been Around the Ancient Eight, highlighting headlines from the Ivy League. Check out new episodes premiering Thursdays on the Ivy League Digital Network.